Hello, today we're going to take a brief overlook at Windows Task Manager. Let's open that with Control Shift and then Escape on the keyboard. That's the quick way to open it. It's a little faster than using Control and Delete. And now that we're in Task Manager, I'll show you some of the things that it's used for. The first tab up at the top is where most people start, and that allows you to see all of the applications that are running. If you notice, it's the same ones that are on my taskbar. You can also end task by selecting it and clicking the end task button. And you can start new tasks. This, is, this actually used to be more important in versions of Windows. Um, in the older days, sometimes Windows itself would crash and you could go to the task manager and type Explorer to relaunch your user interface. But that generally doesn't happen too much anymore. In addition to the applications, there are processes. And these processes are usually supporting the applications that you know are running and there's a lot of things in here that you probably don't know are running. Let's show processes from all users and notice up at the top we have one from AVG that's my antivirus so if we show processes from all users we'll now see that there are none from AVG and that's because a lot of processes are not user specific but they're in general use for the entire computer. Where this information might come in handy is if you get a malware infection or you're on a website that tells you to be sure and shut down a specific process, this is the place to do it. It also comes in handy when something like this happens. Let's say I go to start Kane Enable, which is a networking program, and I've just gotten an error message. It's hidden behind here. But there it is. It says Kane is already in memory. Now it's not showing up in my applications, so where is it? Here it is, it's in my processes because Kane is capable of hiding itself from the applications menu. So if I needed to close that, I could right click on it and click end process and then confirm that that's what I wanted to do. Another thing that happens sometimes is something like this. Here I have JNS, it's a popular um, program for emulating uh, old Nintendo games. And it's a pretty neat program, but it has a few bugs. You notice it shows up in my applications. I close it. It's gone off the applications list, but I come to the processes, and it's still here. And that'll do that every time you open a copy of JNS. It's not good at closing itself. It's a bug in the program because it is a beta. So if you play the game 20 times over the next course of the week, you'll have 20 copies of this program running in your memory and stealing your system resources. So we can right-click that and then that process too. The next thing you have is the Services tab. Now, there's a lot of services that are running on your computer and others that are installed on your computer but not running. That's over here on the status, it's stopped, running, etc. And most of these are high-level services that Windows uses to do things. Uh, but where does that help you? Once again, if someone tells you to shut down a service, that's where you come to do it. But you also have this, SVC Host. It's back in the Processes tab and it's just a generic service host and a lot of viruses like to sneak in under SVC host because no one really knows what they are and which ones they can shut down. But you can find out by right clicking on one of them and clicking go to services it jumps you to the services tab and shows you what it is. That's the Windows terminal service so that's a viable service we don't want to mess with. Let's try another one. This one has to do with my HP printer and there's usually clues, they're not always specific you can look it up online. This one's HPQ Device Discovery, or basically when I plug my printer in, it detects that it's there. The next tab that we'll come to is the Performance tab, and this shows you if you have your computer. Basically, it shows you if something's using too much of your system resources. You can combine this with the Processes tab, select by CPU, and it shows you what's using the most uh, CPU time. As you can see, Cam Recorder right now is using the most. So if we come to the performance tab, this is a dual core, so it's showing each CPU graph separately, and they're not always the same, notice that. It also shows you how much system memory is being used, and a memory usage chart. If this is always at the top, then you might consider getting more memory in your computer. Next we have the networking tab, so I'll, let me go to an internet site and generate some traffic. I'll run a speed test on my computer, which should cause a pretty good spike in traffic. Notice once again there's two charts. The top one is my wireless card, which is what I'm using for the internet, and the bottom one is a wired card that's not being used right now. But as you can see, that generated quite a bit of traffic just for a few seconds. 
but that tells me that my internet was being used and you can get a history graph of how it's been used you can go under view update speed and change the frequency with which it updates but it's generally good to leave it on normal because if you rate it at higher it just uses more system resources last you have the users tab and this is a place that shows you what users are currently logged onto your computer and it's usually just going to be one on a, a commercial piece of software unless you're running in a business environment or um, have a reason to have multiple users installed most home users just have the one user logged in at any given time so there you have it there's the top uses for the Internet Explorer excuse me the task manager and I will now close this last task just to show you you can close them in the background notice the task manager always stays on top until you close it and you do that by clicking file and then exit or just click the little red X on the top